welcome to my workshop and welcome to full HD video. Um, I know a few of you have written in in the past uh, complaining about the black border uh, around my videos uh, on YouTube. Um, the reason for that is um, although I've been on broadband it's been a very low uh, should we say usage of broadband um, and recently or this last week um, Telstra Australian Telecom has been in and dug uh, half a mile down my uh, driveway and put in fiber optics and uh, now I've got full uh, broadband network um, so now I can upload um, a full HD uh, video in about an hour. Uh, before it used to take me anything up to 15 hours. So that is the reason for the smaller screen because um, if I'd have used, if I'd have uploaded um, um, full HD large screen it would have taken about two days. So that's the reason and welcome to the the new look uh, of the of my workshop, the Australian Inventors Workshop. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. Hello, and welcome again to my workshop. Um, in this video or episode, um, what we're going to do is we're going to mill uh, the slot. Uh, in, this is going to actually going to be in the base on the underside uh, like this of this extension. I've designed all this so that you assemble the zero backlash coupling uh, onto the motor first um, and then you can put it into into the actual extension housing. Turn this a little bit. Put it into the extension housing, you see, and you can actually bolt it. That's my German Shepherd. <laughs> uh, bolt it onto this uh, this housing, and then put this onto the um, each axis as a complete unit, and just slip it on, and you can <laughs> you can um, if you can see there, you can you can actually get at the uh, the um, the tightening device there uh, on the inside, and um, yeah, easy to do. Please excuse my German Shepherd. <laughs> Take an exception to uh, by the sounds of it. Uh, one of the neighbours is uh, close to the, the the fence line, which is over that way about 50 meters or so. Ah, quiet. <laughs> off the mill and they've had their their slot cut uh, but they you know it's left a burr around here on the outside on the inside and um, so we'll clean that up now with my deep burring <laughs> Thank you. 
see that uh, that came out very nicely. You'll see a couple of scribe marks on there and some scribe marks on here uh, because I had to line it up really, really squarely with the um, bearing pocket inside there. Um, however, uh, what I'm going to do, um, these are at the moment drilled at 5mm, 5mm that is, uh, which is about, about a quarter of an inch. Um, and these are the 5mm um, hex allen head little bolts that are going to attach this assembly to, the, to this um, bearing housing. However, um, to take any stress um, out of this coupling of misalignment, even if it's 10 or 15 thou, um, what I'm doing is I'm going to drill these holes oversize. Um, I'm going to go six and a half millimeter drill clearance uh, to allow this to move in relation to this bearing pocket then, which holds the um, ball screw shaft out solid. Okay. Um, so this is going to be able to move very, very slightly, half a mil, uh, in any direction, up, down, side to side. It's going to be able to move slightly to be able to get a perfect alignment uh, up between this shaft uh, and this, this motor. Um, I, I believe uh, that uh, there's a few people that's written in to me and said, oh, we've had problems with these type of um, zero backlash uh, couplings uh, that they've been breaking through. That's probably because they're not aligned perfectly, should we say. So um, what I am doing is um, giving the ability to really align these up very, very well um, and to eliminate any possibility of, um, should we say, stresses that, um, that um, can harm any of these type of couplets. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Okay, having tapped all the threads in this bearing block now, it's time to put it all back together. Just simply done just like this. I just want to show you how accurate uh, these ball screws uh, are they're very very high quality and when you adjust the preload what I would call a preload up on this uh, thrust bear in here uh, this is how accurate you can actually make this traverse in other words move the y-axis I'm just going to actually just squeeze uh, this in other words just just turn it as little as I can and if you watch that needle And see how much I'm turning it. There's next to nothing. Well, there actually is no backlash. It's a high quality ball screw or ball and screw. So you can adjust um, this up really, really accurate. Um, I believe that uh, this machine, you should be able to get into to within a th one thousandth of an inch um, of uh, machining operation. Um, was it too much difficulty, I think, which is, for a machine this size, pretty, pretty damn good. Okay, the next thing to go on now is this flange plate, we'll call it. Okay, that just simply pops on there. Don't forget that I did do these holes slightly oversized. 
so I can actually move it very slightly to line the center of this up with the actual uh, zero backlash flexible coupling. Okay, so you'll probably notice you can slightly move it half a millimeter in any direction. That'll allow for perfect alignment. Okay, so obviously this goes at the bottom and um, so what we can do is you now put this on. This is a sort of a, a bit of a push-on fit that might require a hammer and a piece of wood. In fact, I know it will. <laughs> it just taps on. Like that. Very good fit. And of course then these retainers going through from all four flat surfaces. Okay, after getting all your securing bolts one up now needs to be nice and firm like that so really it's as easy as that and that's the the Y axis completed mechanically now I've had quite a few of you um, send me some private messages um, asking me well, why didn't I TIG these um, flanges in here uh, into this housing? Well the reason is I wanted to do things slightly different um, and for I suppose engineering cosmetic reasons I wanted to, this to be designed and to have the um, the looks of an aviation part um, because that's the theme and the accuracy that I I want to actually make um, my kit or my kits or my machines to be very accurate very good value for money and like I say to give it an aviation look uh, which I'm attempting to do I probably could have put three here three here I mean, it's only for cosmetics, but uh, I may do that um, because that's how if you, aircraft wings, if you look at the aircraft wings, the makeup of them, um, you'll find that they're all put together with these type of screws. Um, and in most cases, they're the same grade as these as well. So um, anyway, um, I will now quickly get on with the x-axis and we'll we'll bolt all that up together and um, then we'll get on with the y that's uh, sorry and then we'll get on with the, the big z axis okay so this is the x-axis now going together Nip those up I can still move that half a millimeter in sort of any direction and there's the milled ledge in there that you can see which holds this flange uh, nice and square uh, I mean I know this face here is going to hold it nice and square as well but <laughs> you know the more square surfaces you, you do have um, it's not going to move anywhere so just take a measurement of this now and see where the where the um, zero backlash coupling is going to be placed. 
and the y-axis is completed mechanically um, so I hope you have liked what you've seen uh, in this video please um, subscribe to my channel the red box down there that will take you to my youtube channel where there's CNC routing um, there's uh, I do a lot of wood turning and of course now mechanical CNC conversions and uh, you'll find information there on at cam uh, and uh, Mac 3 as well as NC studio and um, I think there's something there for everybody so my next video will be uh, devoted to the z-axis uh, and the final um, final job uh, hopefully I can get it all in one video uh, if not I'll do one dedicated video on the um, setting up, I think I, I will anyway, I'll do a dedicated video after that of the setting up of the machine and uh, trimming in um, Mac 3 and or NC Studio and uh, show you exactly how to do that, um, how to, to work out the steps of the, the, the uh, stepper motors and um, how to, um, shall we say, uh, program the um, the drivers for the stepper motors? How to work all that out, and indeed, uh, like I say, um, the interaction between the uh, Mac 3 or NC Studio and these machines. So, until next time, it's bye for now.